One particular aspect that I love about fashion is the story that clothing tells through the decades. And over the last 100 years of fits, couture, and accessories, there are items of clothing that simply put are truly timeless, and others that simply only exist in the memories and the photographs from that era. In today's video, I'm gonna give my two cents on what I believe truly never goes out of style and discuss some of the more relevant trends over the last five years, five or so years. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew What It Do, and for those of you who do know me thank you once again for supporting this video this channel and making this community one of the best on fashion youtube all right let's talk fashion so the best way for me to format this video is to create a list so that we won't be here all day <laughs> i have several items over the last 100 years that i consider to be timeless pieces and i have a few trends from the last 10 or so years that either have come and gone or i believe will come and go also if you stick to the end of this video i'll touch on particular brands slash designers that i feel like are having the biggest impact on fashion in 2022. i think the most accurate and proper way to start this video in reference to menswear is to talk about collar uppers. And I didn't want to talk about just one type of collared upper because I do believe that this idea of the collared upper or collared shirt is the signifying look for menswear in relation to modern fashion. I mean, just think about it. No matter what era you're in over the last 100 years, there are men in particular within menswear's fashion scape wearing collared shirts, whether it be for dress shirts, Oxford shirts, biker shirts, whether it be collared flannels, collared jackets, collared polos for layering, kind of like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> From Kanye in the 2000s to King George VI in the 1940s, collared shirts have been used and recontextualized in thousands of ways. And yet, they still look fantastic no matter what context they're put in. And I think a real icon when it comes to menswear looks within this kind of collared shirt or collared upper genre has to be Mr. Baudelaire, Tyler the Creator. I feel like Felicia the Goat always has some type of collared upper on, whether it be a polo, a dress shirt, a layering piece. He is fantastic at making kind of this modern preppy look feel genuine in a 2022 context where a lot of times people love to dress more loungewear or casually. Let's switch gears and talk about probably my favorite aspect of fashion, footwear. Now I've got a question for you. What qualifies as timeless footwear? Hmm? <laughs> I think in order for a pair of shoes to be considered timeless, they have to fit into three modes of criteria. The first one being global recognition. I think that a shoe, in order for it to be timeless, can't just be popular in the US or just popular in Europe or Germany or Japan. It has to have some kind of global pull to it where universally everyone recognizes it as something that is deemed valuable or timeless. And because I am putting shoes in the context of the last 100 years and talking about timelessness of it, it has to have existed for at least 10 years or more. I think if you make the bar like a shoe that's only existed for a year or six months, if you lower the bar to that level, you don't really know how timeless it truly is. So there are certain, certain shoe models that just aren't in the running for timeless yet because they just haven't had the proof to prove their longevity. So sneakers like the Yeezy 350 Boost or I don't know, like the Balenciaga Trooper boots, they just aren't in the category yet. But they could be, who knows. And thirdly, the shoe or footwear item has to be at the top of the food chain in terms of how other models pull from that design. If Hopefully that makes sense, I'll explain. Example would be like the Balenciaga Speed Trainer. That shoe was very popular, I think 2017, 2016, 2018, and there were a lot of dupes of that shoe being created. So. In my eyes, the top of the food chain is the Balenciaga Speed Trainer. That is the top for that genre, for the sock shoe, for that iteration. Below that is something like the H&M Dupe that basically blatantly ripped off that design. There's no way the H&M Dupe can be timeless when the Balenciaga shoe obviously is the top of the food chain in terms of design, in terms of creativity, and it is the first to do so, like the first iteration of the shoe. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have some shoes that I kind of list out and i'm going to say trendy or timeless you can do this with me down in the comment section or you can add shoes that i may have missed that you think are either trendy or timeless um i'm curious to know what you think because this is gonna be fun for me <laughs> okay starting off 
we're gonna start with loafers and I'm gonna say timeless. Becoming popularized in the 50s and 60s, loafers have been around for plenty of years and have been recontextualized to be more chunky, to be more slender, to fit in different forms and models. And I think that even the iteration that we're seeing now with loafers is still a part of that original concept of the loafer, even though obviously it's changed dramatically in some departments, but it still has that semblance of what it is and what it was. So I have to give it the timeless stamp of approval. Eight eye derby boots. I'm also gonna give this timeless. When you think of stylistic boots, you imagine the eight eye derby, whether that be from Doc Martin, from Solivare, or other classic derby boots with the lacing that goes all the way up. Those are the boots that we think about, in, at least in the modern context, in the last 30 years, of the most iconic stylistic looking boot. So I think above all else, that boot has to be given the timeless stamp of approval. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. The, the stamp of approval, stamp it. <laughs> Jordan 1s. Now this one is tough for me because I think what Jordan brand is doing to the Jordan 1 right now is a bit criminal. But I would have to say that the Jordan 1 at this point in terms of sneakers, is a timeless sneaker. There have been so many other iterations and runoffs of the Jordan 1, and while even the Jordan 1 is a, is a deviant or a uh, iteration of a previous sneaker, I think that everyone holds that Jordan 1 to such a mystical kind of shoe. Everyone loves the Jordan 1, right? Even if, obviously, it's not in trend right now, like the Jordan 1 will always be a timeless silhouette. You know, when it was introduced to many, many years after we've all passed away, people will talk about the Jordan 1. You can probably even argue that Jordan 1 is the greatest sneaker of all time. And maybe it doesn't fall into the perfect criteria because it's not widely, widely known as maybe the number one, but I feel like, I don't know, the Jordan 1 has so much has so much cachet, it, it's gotta be timeless. I think other timeless sneakers in particular include Vans Eras, Air Force Ones, Air Max Ones, Stan Smiths, and you gotta put in the Converse Chuck Taylors for sure. Let me think if I missed some other timeless sneakers. I don't know. I think for dress shoes, and just for time, like ultimately timeless footwear, you have to have Oxfords, you have to have derbies. I'm talking about low derbies, dress shoes. You have to have heels for women's wear, whether it be red bottoms or uh, different heel stylings. Those obviously, there's there's many iterations of these types of shoes. And with each iteration, it's just a continuation of that an original idea and it's being built on top of that. So for sure, it's timeless. You could probably make a multi-part series talking about Oxfords, Derbies, and Heels because there are just so many different variations. And I know I'm beating this point on the head like with a nail, but it's just true. Like we could be here all day. So. Let's move on. So we talked about uppers, we talked about footwear, let's talk about that sweet spot in the middle which are bottoms or pants or trousers or whatever your native tongue calls pants. Trousers for some. <laughs> now, hopefully this isn't too much bias, but I think being an American, I have to first speak on the classic of all classic denim company in the United States which is Levi's and the classic of all classics of all classics pant, the Levi's 501. Now there are many different iterations of Levi's that have been around and existed. And I've talked about Levi's Agnosium because I love the jeans. And I do think that the Levi's pant really revolutionized style and really changed the game for a lot of individuals living today. And I think the 501 is that initial step into the modern man in terms of casual dress, in terms of denim in their wardrobe. I think you have to throw in other workwear staples within the timeless bottoms genre. Workwear has had a huge stamp on just fashion and clothing in general, whether it be straight leg pants like the 874, whether you, you know, you're obviously seeing a new iteration of Carhartt pants and things of that nature, and they're being recontextualized and they've been around for a long time and we'll see how much longer they will be around. They probably will be around for you know for the foreseeable future right so they have to be considered a somewhat timeless item within fashion even if at times they're not always in the major zeitgeist of what we consider to be the coolest pant or bottom around someone always leaves a comment about how i typically say the word zeitgeist and i said it again so 
There you go. I think you also have to think about something like selvage denim, which has been around since the 50s and has become even more popularized. It's a little bit more niche, but I think it's still a timeless aspect of pants bottoms. Selvage denim is just a, such a cool production style, and it's just something that is really, really interesting to me, at least. It might not be timeless in the sense that a lot of people know what it is, though. So I don't know. Selvage denim is up there. What do you guys think about that? That's a that's a take I'll leave in the comment section. Last for bottoms, I have to include flip layered bottoms, whether that be something like the 517 for Levi's or other flared options that just have been around for the set since the 70s and have just flourished within modern fashion. I think right now we're in a resurgence. Obviously, skinny jeans and different things of that nature had a moment as well. And that I don't think they're as timeless because you, you see more flared and wide fitting pant options through history than you do ultra skinny options through history. And that's just the truth. So I think wide fitting flared pants those are definitely timeless pieces and um, there are a slew of brands that obviously offer them and have offered them for many many years what did i what did i miss did i miss anything i i know i did so if i if i left out something that you think is either timeless or trendy we're gonna get to the trendy stuff but if you think i left out something that was timeless comment that down in the comment section and if you're enjoying the video so far click that like button help this channel out thank you so much to the community pvv all right i'm talking too much let's get on to what is trendy i think a trend that was really interesting to me in 2020 uh, kind of in tandem with the rise of social media platform tiktok was this kind of love for replicas and rep goods and in 2022 i just don't see all the hoopla as it relates to people buying into reps and wanting reps and caring about reps it just seems to be a kind of dying topic and i think there's a couple of reasons why so to quickly explain reps reps are essentially just a carbon copy or a near close copy in terms of design of an item of clothing with the same branding with everything is exactly the same but it's not coming from the original manufacturer or distributor of said brand so usually they're made in factories that are not representative of the actual factories for the production of the original goods and what you saw on tiktok a lot in 2020 was just this like oh bro like you can't cop the jordan whatever like just get the rep or oh no you can't get the rick owens blah 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 like just get the rep and i just don't see that anymore i think it's because one i think the legality of it i think a lot of these companies are cracking down on that so there's obviously like malpractice involved with replicas and then i think also people have are having a little bit of a mindset shift as it relates to replicas they're starting to think man it, it might not be the best decision for me to buy reps to wear this just because i want to be a part of this group or have this product there are other products and hopefully with my content especially on tiktok i try to help people find different items that they also might think are cool besides the more classic cool items which were dunks and, and and jordans on tiktok in particular so i think that people are having a bit of a mindset shift i talked about this trend in my last video but i think we're in the midst of one of kind of my more favorite trends within the last year year and a half and that has to be gorpcore and i think gorpcore is something that we've all experienced and seen and been a part of um, either if you're on the internet or if you're not like meme culture towards gorpcore is for one hilarious and for two really prevalent with on social media i don't know why that was so choppy but it was <laughs> especially 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 arcteryx and i think i think the gorp core trend while it has like timeless elements to it especially if you're in performance outdoor sports or if you're a, just an outdoor person you can wear your arc we can wear you can wear your little arky jacket for a long time okay like don't worry it's a good investment but will it be the kind of of nucleus of what we consider to be cool and fashion for the next five years probably not it'll probably have its moment which is in right now and subside and be replaced with something else I think in terms of footwear, in terms of sneakers, New Balance has been extremely trendy. Not number one. I think it is probably number one. I don't know what footwear brand is number one. It's probably not like a, it's not a sneaker brand. I would say that it's the, the title is being shared by brands like New Balance right now, brands like Balenciaga right now, um, and just kind of one-off Gorp core type footwear. I don't know. I just, I see, I'm seeing a lot of different things where before in 2020, 2021, I think the major, major footwear trend was people were wearing a lot of Jordan 1s, people were wearing a lot of Dunks, people were wearing a lot of Jordan 4s. People still have those shoes and still like them and are still wearing them more than likely. I'm just telling you, I'm not seeing it as much. And that's kind of the, that's how you understand trends. Like when 
you can if I can think about a year and think about okay, 2020 dunks, 2021 Jordan fours, 2022 Gorpy, whatever. I, I honestly I can't think of anything for 2022 right now. So if you have an idea, leave it down in the comment section. I would even say like 2020 dunks, 550s, 2021 550s. 2022 well, like i said i don't know so i'm rambling sorry guys other trendy footwear includes balenciaga and bottega veneta i think what they've done recently with like balenciaga's croc boots the trooper boots and bottega's puddle boots are incredibly memefied and trendy and will probably we'll look back and we'll be like man that was, those are interesting but i do think balenciaga what balenciaga has done is really cool like i i have to say that i have to tip my hat to them because i do feel like for all of the attention they create for their brand, their products are just very, you can tell they're just very forward thinking and very different than the others. The next trend I wanna talk about, which really could fall in line with trendy or timeless, cause I kind of hinted or alluded at this. I talked about wide fitting pants, but I wanna talk about like ultra wide fitting pants, almost parachute pants, pants that you've seen that really create this really dynamic silhouette when you're wearing your outfits. I see it a lot of times in women's wear. I'm pretty tall. I haven't seen someone who's like super tall wear some really wide fitting pants because they probably struggle with getting them things down to the angle. I'm just trying to say that what I see typically as a trend right now is these parachute and wide fitting pants. What do you think about this trend? They should be on the screen right now. So what do you what do you guys think about this? Is this a trend or is this like, this is it, this is timeless. I think it's important to say it's okay to be into trendy things. Like a lot of us are introduced to fashion through trends, whether that be like Supreme, whether that be a particular Jordan or a particular pair of shoes, like that might be the spark plug for you to start your fashion journey. And so for a lot of people, it's like that. If it's not, if it's not like that for you, I feel like it's kind of rare. Like all of us are and enter into fashion based off of what we hear and how we interact with each other socially and who says what is cool and who thinks what is cool, right? So there's no shade on anybody who likes trends. I like Gorpcore. I think it's cool. I want some interesting parachute pants, even though I was kind of clowning on the fact that, that tall people probably can't wear them, but I want to try and see. Don't let trends or time, timelessness defer you from buying. Just know that like the reason for this video is to illuminate the fact that while there are trends, things will come and go. You should buy what you want, buy what you like, of course, buy what you like. Timelessness obviously has the greatest longevity. So collared shirts, wide fitting, straight fitting pants, particular shoes will always be kind of cool. Understand these things, but don't let the uh, stamp of timelessness be a rigid guide or guide or, or guardrail to your creativity and your style. Allow yourself to flourish and be creative and try things that are deemed as trendy try things that are deemed as weird wacky or cool whatever it's about having fun with it and that's a digression again because i'm just in a talking mood today like let's move on to the the final section of the video which is the biggest brands and designers in 2022 and their impact that they will have on the next 8 10 15 20 years or i don't know if i can go into my crystal ball that far but We'll see. So every few years, new brands become the proverbial it brand of that era. In the early 2000s, I would say like Juicy Couture was one of those brands, Von Dutch, Lacoste, Jerbode, et cetera, et cetera. I would say in the 2010s, the hottest, biggest brands in the 2010s had to be Supreme, Gucci, Off-White, Louis Vuitton, et cetera, et cetera. Anti-social social club, anybody? <laughs> now we're in the 2020s and just had a pandemic and World War III is just broke out. But it's interesting to, to look at or what are the biggest, coolest, and most popular brands currently in the early 2020s. Right now on my list, I'll put brands like Emma Leon Dore, Bodhi, Balenciaga, and Telfar up there for myself right now. And that's who I think are some of the more it brands. But like I said, I'm not, I don't, I don't really have all the answers. What do you think are the it brands right now? And how do you think that they will impact the next 10 years of fashion. I think a lot of these brands, well, some of them are responsible for in part the resurgence of style and fashion from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, recontextualized. I think of Bodhi, I think of ALD for that. And then I think for brands like Balenciaga and others, some brands are really pushing the boundary of what it means to be a modern fashion company. And I think something that we all underestimate is the way in which these businesses disseminate information through the communication of social media. I think the era we're living in now, it's tougher to have an it brand because communities are flourishing 
outside of ALD, outside of Balenciaga. There are small brands. I talk about homie brands all the time. I talk about small niche communities. I talk about big niche communities. And as a result, it's harder to really come to an agreement on what is the it brand because there are so many different versions of clothing being made in so many different spaces all across the world. And we all can access it because of globalization and social media. Oh man, I'm getting real passionate about this stuff, but I'm curious to know what you guys think about this. What would you consider to be trendy in this video that I said was timeless or vice versa? I'm curious to know what you think down in the comment section. Please, please, please engage. Like I love reading the comments. I want there to be like a crazy all out crazy conversation down in the comment section because I really do appreciate just the dialogue as it relates to these things. We ultimately get to decide what is cool, what is not cool. And at any moment we could change our minds and ALD or Bodhi could be the ugliest thing on the earth. And maybe it will, hap will happen one day, 10 years down the line. So anyways, as always, I'm spreading peace, love and positivity in 2022. So that means I'm spreading peace, love and positivity to you wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you later. Abianto. Peace. Post vid vid. What's good, y'all, man? How, how y'all doing today? Y'all like the vocals? I mean, I mean, let me th let me throw some little, you know, Alicia Keys at y'all real quick. And did it do do? And did it do 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 Fist bump time. Post vid vid. Bop. Appreciate you guys so, so much. Um, oh, wait, y'all y'all didn't think I was going to do another one? Bop! You know what I'm saying? So, I appreciate the post vid vid so much. My energy right now is on 10. Um, you know, the sun is shining. Hair feels good. Um, yeah, obviously, I got a haircut. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm digging the little, you know, preppy little look I got going on right now. But in all seriousness, um, there is something really serious happening in the world right now. Right, PVV? It's kind of crazy. Um, obviously, we've lived through a, a pandemic and we're currently living through a pandemic. And, you know, now it seems like we're going to be living through a Call of Duty video game, which is really, really terrifying. And we, we don't know what will happen in, you know, the regions of the world that are under attack. And, um, you know, if, if anybody knows anyone who's there or if you have family, you know, my thoughts, my prayers, my wishes, everything goes out because... I just kicked the camera because, you know, it's, it's a scary time we're living in. And I know um, for me, at least I wanted to still make this video because I feel like I have a responsibility to still bring a level of normalcy, positivity and joy to the world, even though obviously things are going on. And hopefully you still enjoy the video. You're still engaged with the community. And uh, hopefully I can only hope for the best. I honestly don't know what's going to happen, um, but I, I do know I want to say thank you for all the support through all of you know, the pan pandemic to this, to everything beyond. Thank you for tuning in. And um, I got love for y'all, man. I really do. So, all right. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace out.